Thank you for listening to the Matt's Movie Reviews podcast, available on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and Stitcher. Also, please follow Matt's Movie Reviews on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Reddit, Instagram, and MeWe. And of course, be sure to visit mattsmoviereviews.net for the latest reviews, top 10 lists, and more. Now, on to the show. New York is on life support. The shops are closed. Our church is also empty. How are things up in New York? No, no anarchy in the streets? It's nothing in the streets. The streets are empty. It's creepy. Hey, there he is! Yo, look at you. Father Andrew. Is that what I'm supposed to call you now? Or can I just call you Andrew? Who's this? Paul. Hi. This is an old friend of mine. A dear old friend. This guy was wild back in the day. It's a good thing he found God or he'd probably be in prison right now. It's not even remotely true. We need as much connection as we could get right now. If that's the case, why not open up the church? No, it's too dangerous. So you're afraid? Aren't you afraid? It would give people hope. I think you're right, but it has to be conditional. Of course. We have to practice absolute safety. People can come in to pray by appointment only. Do you reject Satan? Sure. They have 10 minutes. Well, some people might need more than that. Who prays for more than 10 minutes? Even the Pope doesn't pray that long. You think God wants to listen to that? Does my husband cheat? I can't tell you that. Why? If I told you that, then I'd have to go to Rome to be pardoned by the Pope himself. I thought you were an atheist. Me? No, I'm not an atheist. When I went to seminary, you totally made fun of me. Because you're Jewish. When you read all these religions, when you get past the, the, the surface stuff, we all want the same thing. Peace. Clarity, contentment, it's kind of beautiful. I saw the soul, the physical soul, leave a body. What does it look like? Maybe you're spending too much time at that church? Yeah, those are my friends. My son, the mensch priest, I love you. She's gonna show you something that'll blow your mind. Hello and welcome to the Matt's Movie Reviews Podcast. I am your host, Matthew Perkovich, and this is episode number 354. Releasing July 2nd in theatres across the US and on digital is Scenes from an Empty Church, a spiritual comedic drama set in a lockdown New York City, during which two Catholic priests opened their church doors to a city yearning for hope and connection. A film that is timely, witty, and features a terrific cast, including Kevin Corrigan, Max Casella, and Paul Reiser. Scenes from an Empty Church is also the latest film from prolific New York-based filmmaker Anur Tekel, who I'm glad to say joins me now on the podcast. Anur, I thank you very much for joining me today. Oh, it's great to be here. Thanks, Matt. I appreciate it. So this film is really interesting. It is a departure from your previous films. Um, on your Twitter page, in fact, I'm, you've described your previous films as a dark, cynical, fucked-up comedies, um, yeah. whereas, whereas this film, Scenes from an Empty Church, it really is a f- film about hope and spirituality and connection, amongst other things. It's also set in a Catholic church, and you have priests as your main lead characters. How did that kind of come about, especially in regards to having your film set within a church and having uh, holy men as the lead characters in your movie? Yeah, that was just uh, a result of a friend of mine, Andrew Shemin, who is one of the uh, um, producers on the movie. He shot the movie. He lives in the rectory beside of the church, and he reached out to me um, in December of 2019 and said, look, uh, the, the church, let's make a movie in the church that I live beside. He's a, he's a member of the church. He's a very um, devout Catholic. He, had a re- he has a really nice uh, red helium camera. And he came to me and said, let's make a movie in the church. And I make very low budget movies. So I never have a lot of money for production design or to make something very elaborate and beautiful settings. We usually wouldn't have the money to afford a church like this unless, um, you know, we, we had an inside kind of, uh, you know, way to get in there. So he approached me and said, let's make a movie. And I said, uh, that sounds great. Let me um, try to think of something that we could write. And I'd written a script uh, about some, um, some priests in the church that wasn't really related to the pandemic. But then when the p- pandemic happened, um, I just kind of re- rewrote the script a little bit so that it was kind of catered, tailored towards the, you know, the situation. So it was a matter of we were going to make something in the church anyway. And then when the pandemic happened, it seemed like a really good opportunity to take advantage of the fact that the church was empty. We had it to ourselves and it just fit the, it just fit the storyline that uh, two priests, um, you know, pre, you know, the, the idea of uh, faith is to give people hope 
to give people meaning, to, to steer them in the, in the proper direction, to, to give them light. And um, that seemed like a pretty good theme to tackle during the pandemic was uh, looking for hope and looking for light. And um, what is the importance of the body in relation to the soul, especially when all of our bodies are disconnected and we can't see each other face to face. So it was just kind of a perfect storm of opportunity. And also, uh, sadly, um, you know, the pandemic affecting us and taking advantage of that, you know, thematically. I'm also a Catholic as well, a practicing Catholic. And I'm really curious in regards to you have a, a friend who knows someone at the church. Do you have to get permission to film in there? Do they have to look at a script or anything like that? How's that kind of all kind of work about? Yeah, the main the main priest of the church. I don't what is I don't know what the position of that is called the diocese or, or whoever is the head yes. of the Catholic Church. That particular Catholic, that particular parish of uh, Father George Rutler. Yeah, he he gave us his blessing. He he read the script and thought it was uh, great. And even though we challenge, you know, some of the tenets of Catholicism a little bit. He, he understood the importance of that. So, yeah, he, he had to look at the script and approve it and uh, gave us his blessing. So he's um, F- Father Rutler is a pretty renowned, you know, Catholic priest. He's written, I think, over 20 books and is uh, very well regarded in, in the Catholic Church, I believe. So um, I think he's no stranger to, to being in the, the public light. He's a he's a fan of movies. Mm. He loves culture and, uh, you know, so I, he was, you know, he, he found it, um, he, he, found, he, was, he was very supportive from, from day one, you know, so, but yeah, we definitely had to get permission. What church is that, by the way? It's not really mentioned in the movie. It's um, St. Michael's uh, Catholic Church. Oh, it, it's got a specific name. Can Let me look it up as we're talking. Um, St. Michael's church i'm gonna look it up on google map i know i'm so bad with memories and when i get interviewed i get a little stressed out in my memory i get, I get like weird like memory loss when i'm uh, being interviewed so uh let me just look it up right now and the saint michael's I get the same thing with short-term memory all the time as well. It is a very much a, a stress induced uh condition yeah I, I do this thing where i'm where i'm at like public um functions and whatnot and i i know uh, so many people that are going to be there that i know and I get an insane stress and I forget everyone's names because I just, I don't know what I'm over as short circuit in my mind a little bit. St. Michael Roman Catholic church. Mm-hmm. It's on, um, it's on ninth. It's between ninth Avenue. It's on ninth Avenue, between ninth Avenue and 10th Avenue on um, 33rd street in Manhattan. It's a beautiful, beautiful church as you can see in the movie. And um, Andrew Shemin, who's the DP, he's, wonderful and he's extremely intelligent he was he was really the uh you know he knows so much about the catholic church i don't know a lot about the catholic church i grew up in a a small baptist town in north carolina so my and and my relationship to the church was kind of peripherally i would i would i would go with friends to the church and learn a little bit of dime story kind of you know about the bible i don't know much about the bible but uh so andrew shemin and i crafted the story together and when i needed very specific um you know, information about, you know, the link between the Old Testament, the New Testament, Judaism, uh, and, and, and Jesus, and uh, Catholic, and, you know, the, 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 bring, the, the beginning of Christianity stemming from the Old Testament. You know, Andrew was there to answer all my questions, and we would have these long exchanges through emails where I would, I was basically the character of Paul. Paul mm. was the Max Casella character, you know, who's very naive. He doesn't know a lot. He's asking a lot of questions, and that's pretty much me. I, that kind of represents me in the movie. And, um, you know, Father Andrew, which is Kevin Corrigan's ca- character, I, I, I named him Andrew basically based on Andrew Shem and um, one of the producers and, and the DP because, you know, he it's really kind of his story that I'm kind of telling in, in a way. I mean, it's not his story, but like his, you know, he he's from a Jewish background, converted to Catholicism. And those, those that's what a lot of our conversations were about is like, how did that happen? And, and I found, I came to realize that a, a lot, there are a lot of Jewish people who are Catholics. And that's just something I didn't, I never, I just, I, I don't know. I just never assumed the link between Old Testament and New Testament. I, I'm very naive when it comes to anything about Catholicism. So I felt like writing something from my point of view would be something that could appeal to a lot of people, you know, Catholics and non-believers and um, agnostics and even people from other religions, you know, but yeah, St. Michael's uh, Roman Catholic church. If you're in Manhattan, if you're ever in there, where are you based out of Matt, 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 S- Sydney, Australia. Okay, great. Yeah. Do you ever come to the city? Do you ever come to New York? I've never been yet. No, not to the States, been around Europe and such, but the States not, so, not yet. 
Yeah, yeah. So St. Michael Roman Catholic Church. Yeah. Are you still a practicing Catholic? I am, yes. Oh, that's amazing. That's great. Yeah. You mentioned Max Casella, Kevin Corrigan. Thomas J. Ryan also stars in the film as well. He plays Father James and Father James, especially at the start of the film, always cleaning, always cautious, a bit paranoid as well with uh, COVID out there, not allowing people in the church. When you're shooting the film, do you have to take on the same kind of mentality as Father uh, Father James? Do you always have to constantly clean and stuff like that um, on your sets? Yeah, uh, you know, that was, we started, we shot the movie in July of, of 2020 and there's the union, the, the Screen Actors Guild, which is the union that handles, you know, actors like Thomas J. Ryan, Max Casella, and, and Kevin Corrigan, Paul Reiser, you know, established actors, you have to be in the union. And the, and the and SAG, I think we were one of the first films shooting in New York, and SAG was kind of figuring out the protocols for filmmakers, you know, because they want to protect their members, they want to protect, you know, the actors and stuff. So we had to, to adhere to a, a strict kind of code of, of, of conduct while we were making the film. We had to make sure there were plenty of cleaning supplies. We had to, you know, clean between, uh, between scenes. We had to make sure there were masks and gloves available. We had a COVID kind of specialist there, like a nurse who would take everyone's temperature every day. And, and we had, everyone had to be tested for COVID. So, you know, we had a very, very small cast and crew, but we still had to treat it like it was, um, a, a large set, you know? Um, but this was very early in the process. And I think mm. the, the regulations have even ramped up and they're even more stringent now or strict now, but, but I haven't made anything since then. So I don't, I don't know what they're doing, but yeah, we had to pretty much do what they were doing while we were making the film. We were cleaning and we were, you know, they, they'll say now that a lot of cleaning and a lot of that stuff is called like um, um, hygiene theater is what they're calling it, which is uh -huh. like a lot of that cleaning was kind of unnecessary, but I mean, we did it because, you know, we were a, we were so nervous. We were just afraid that it could, you know, that someone could have brought the virus in or that if we went out to, to get lunch and come back that, you know, somebody would have been infected. But, um, but we were very lucky. We got through it without, without, without any incidents, you know, but, but we were definitely cautious while we were making the film and, you know, Kevin and, and Tom and, and, um, and, and Max even joked about how, you know, there was, um, you know, there's always a little bit of stress when you're making a film, but this time there was a lot more stress because mm. of the, uh, because of the virus. But um, Tom talked about, and Kevin talked about how they used that kind of fear that they were actually experiencing to their benefit. They actually, it help, helps inform their performances in a lot of ways, you know, which I thought was terrific. Yeah. I was reading um, an interview that you gave around a time that a little after you made uh, uh, scenes from an empty church, you talked about how this whole kind of thing with COVID and everything when it comes to filmmaking, it's an opportunity for filmmakers to create smaller stories, not just independent filmmakers, but like even like studio as well. Um, and it makes sense. I mean, we are living in a changing world and as a result of that, we have to change our approaches to work and life and everything else. And especially, and the filmmaking world as well. Is it, is it the hope that from what everyone's been gone through with COVID, especially filmmakers such as yourself and other filmmakers as well, is that more intimate filmmaking will come from it? Will there be, say, a boom of smaller productions, for example, um, yeah, from, from this, some, something similar to what you've done with uh, scenes from an empty church? I, I don't know if that'll happen. I mean, you know, I, I don't like to, the thought of making a film with a 150 or even a 75 or hundred person crew, I always thought was a little excessive. I always thought instead of making a, uh, you know, $80 million movie with, uh, you know, a huge crew and maybe make three or four, you know, movies out of that, or, or even 10 or 11 and give some other people a chance to make films. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. I mean, there, the, we, we've always had the ability to make tiny, small budgeted movies with or without a pandemic, um, I, I don't think the studios are going to change. I think they're still going to make their big budget spectacles, which are necessary. And I think that we, people want to see those. Um, it would be nice to see uh, more mainstream actors doing films like this. You know what I mean? Like um, mm -hmm. seeing big, big movie uh, actors that are in multi-million dollar productions doing tiny budgeted movies to give small filmmakers like us a chance because you know our movies are more viable and more lucrative if we have more recognizable actors in them but it's really hard to approach them and break through the kind of the managers and the agents they don't have a lot of interest in tiny budgeted movies because there's not a 
lot of money there. And I know it's a business and people need to make money. Um, but at, at the same time, um, it's a kind of a chicken and egg thing. It's hard to get financing without actors attached. And it's hard to attach actors when there's no financing. Um, so I would hopefully like to, you know, after having a year off, actors might be missing the process of acting and might want to do something a little more intimate and, and that's a little more challenging um, theatrically. So I hope it happens. I, I don't know. I hope there's, you know, there's again, like, you know, the, it's become very egalitarian in terms of anybody being able to make a film on their iPhone or, or with a tiny crew. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I just think this, it's movie, you know, if it wasn't, it's all about the performances. And if it wasn't for Kevin and, and Max and Tom and, and, and Paul and, and Natalie Carter and Marjorie Johnson, all the small the actors too, that aren't recognizable, you know, this movie lives by the performances like it's you know we just we have the camera locked down we, we don't do any dolly shots just theatrically there's not a lot going on but i think that the performances are so powerful it really gives the movie a lot of um i don't know value and weight also the beautiful kind of church setting so it feels to me it feels it's the most i think it's the best film i've ever done even though it's it's so kind of tiny and small just because the performances i think are so assured and so I'd put them beside of any big budget performances that are out there, you know? Um, so I don't know. I, I, I can, I don't need a lot to be satisfied as a film viewer. I just need a close up of an actor and, and some good dialogue. And I'm not saying my di my dialogue is pretty good, but those actors, they, the way they performed it, they just transcended the material, you know, and I'm just mm -hmm. so proud of what they did. Um, but yeah. Um, it would like it would be nice to see you know there's so much out there so i can't say that there's not a lot of wonderful material out there but um i i you know it seems like a lot of the dramas that you're seeing are, are more tv series and you don't see dramatic films being made as much not like not like they used to be they're more now in tv series and and that's good but i'd rather watch a movie than a series i just don't you know i just don't have the i, I don't have the focus for a lot of 10 hour, 12 hour series. You know what I mean? I'd rather just watch a really nice tight 90 minute or two hour movie. You know, hopefully they'll be making more stuff like that, but I'm not sure. We did when we made this pandemic movie, we definitely didn't want to do a movie that was just driven by zoom performances. I know that a lot of movies were being made during the pandemic. Tom said he got a lot of scripts that were where people were taking advantage of the pandemic, which was great, which was people zooming with each other. And a lot of the storyline was um, transmitted through zoom, which kind of contradicts what I was saying. It's like, all I need is a close up and good dialogue. But at the same time, I don't want to just watch people sitting in front of a computer talking to each other. We, we wanted that scene with Paul Reiser in the movie because that was part of the reality we were living in. I mean, that was a lot of the communication that was happening during the pandemic was yeah. talking to people via Zoom. So we definitely wanted to have a scene that illustrated that was part of what was happening um, in the world at that time. And it also was a chance for us to get Paul Reiser in the movie because, um, you know, Kevin Corrigan has a relationship with him and we, 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 we reached out to him. He was game to do it. He was really, really great. And uh, so, you know, shooting the Zoom scene was it was both a reflection of the culture we were living in. And also we took advantage of the fact that we could get Paul in L.A. So, but yeah, I, I you know, I, I thought it was an interesting movie to make um, that, that, you know, that wasn't on Zoom. It, it was a pandemic movie that wasn't just talking heads on Zoom, you know. Well, it is a movie that was, you know, you can call it a pandemic movie, but to me, having uh, watched it, I think it's it's a movie that, that talks about a lot of things, beliefs, connections to family and friends. It's a cathartic journey as well, those characters. And for everyone out there listening, July 2nd, Scenes from an Empty Church, Theatres and Digital, I recommend everyone watch this film. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a terrific film, Onar, and uh, congratulations to you with the movie. Hopefully uh, we can talk again in the future with your future releases. And, look, congratulations with this film. I think it's a perfect way to kick off the second half of 2021. So thank you very much for that. Matt, I really appreciate it. I, I, and, I, you know, I could I could try to answer some questions related to Catholicism and the movie. Um, but, you know, I don't think there's a lot of specific Catholicism in the movie. I think it's all pretty broad and I think it's relatable to a lot of people, whether you're Catholic or not. You know, yes. and that's what we we're trying to kind of make is a movie that doesn't isn't really specifically about Catholicism, but more about, you know, faith in a time of um uncertainty i guess you know or hope in a time of uncertainty so and you've succeeded in that congrats very and thank you very much for your time thank you so much matt i appreciate it